by the Supreme Decisions here, and yes, it's been a long time coming. We're at Worldplay Studios, and we are closing out the Series 100. Now, what, what, how, how do we end this? With me, I actually want to end it with an absolute banger. Also a case that you probably never looked at. And it's another one of those guide cases. It's not a case that set precedence, but it did show an application. Because this is pretty much the second part or the continuation from the video I did called he said she said because a police officer pushing someone to felonious conditions without speaking to everyone involved and making a decision based on their own officer discretion which is their choice their free will again that's what discretion actually means without doing that it's unlawful, which is a misapprehension of law, which makes the arrest, the subjecting someone to a felonious condition by placing you on the ground, putting you in handcuffs, detaining you longer than the 19 minutes that Sharp allows, is illegal. Now, the case that I wanna to talk to you about today is, again, it's one of those where I'm going to absolutely butcher Anyway, it's gonna be right here, so it is what it is. Shanex Loth v. Bustamante, 412 US 218, and this is an old case, 1973. Yeah, this case older than me. However, it goes into the rule that a case involving a consensual search, knowledge of a right to refuse consent is a factor in determining whether a grant of consent to search was voluntary. The state does not need to prove that the person who was granted consent to search knew the right to refuse consent under the Fourth Amendment. That said a whole lot. What does it mean? Well, basically what happens is I constantly tell you one of the first things that I even taught my children was apparently at the end. I do not consent. Call my father. His phone number is. Those are the things that I feel that you need to kind of instill into your children, but it also needs to be something that you understand as well, because I always tell people, as an adult, you behave as an adult, and understand, as an adult, you don't deal with anyone else's children. You talk to the other adults. What I mean by this is, even whenever I had issues and I went to federal court with police officers, I didn't have long-winded conversations with the cop because I'm not dealing with someone else's child. I'm going to a federal court judge who is the parent of this child. Now, understanding the context, that's what, that's what I'm talking about here, context. Not that these are physical children, but you know, they're somebody's child, anyway. Consensual searches are constitutional because remember, they need consent in one of two forms because there was a case where it stated that if you don't give them consent, they need a magistrate judge who is better determined or better in ability to determine what probable cause is than they are. So they need either you to give it or judge because what happens is these things called exigent circumstances a lot of times they understand that they 
are available. The problem is they don't understand the execution of them. And here's where this plays in. Because the government must show that consent existed. This is why they have video of interrogations. This is why they have video when they're supposedly speaking with you. Because if they cannot show consent existed, consent can be challenged. Now, this is why I constantly tell people, ask for all, any and all, audio and video of your incident. This is something that is placed in federal statutes. It is placed in federal codes. It's even in your code for discovery, which is generally listed in your organic code. Why? Because the procedures are available because of the totality of circumstances. Partially done through consent from either you or consent from a judge. These are the things that we have to speak about and we have to enforce in order to make sure the system runs as it's written, not as it's been doing. So the consent must be proven by the one that is making the allegations. Now, we've gotten that out of the way. The thing that we're getting ready to go to is weaponize your defense. I'm going to have overviews. I'm actually going to release the previews of some of the videos that I've already done. Thank you, YouTube. And I'm going to go deeper into a lot of the things that we're doing and how to apply these things in your defense. This is going to be done through the masterclass. So if you have not signed up for the masterclass, you're probably going to be missing out because it's actually going to be something that saves you money in the long run. Because I'm going to talk about a few things, even on live shows, where you're probably not going to be able to grasp, because even when I'm telling you to get your pens and paper ready, most of you aren't doing that. So, you either miss the boat now, or you stay off the boat when it floats. As you see, we're still going, we're still growing, we're still finding more and more platforms to be on. The business itself is becoming self-sustaining and I appreciate everyone that is continuing to donate and be a part of the progress. Love you guys. Let's keep going. Let's keep growing. Supreme Decisions, out.